Thomas Hammer. Everyone, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Sunshine notice, Madam Clerk. Thank you, Mayor. Board of Commissioners public meeting Tuesday, September 21st, 2021. The time is now 707. Pursuant to the requirements of the Open Public Meeting Act, Chapter 231, Public Law 1975, notice of this meeting was published in the December 3rd, 2020 issues of the Nutley Sun, the Herald News, and the Star Ledger. A copy of this notice has been posted on the Nutley Town Hall Bulletin Board, and a copy is on file in the Municipal Clerk's Office. Commissioner Kelly. Present. Commissioner Evans. Here. Commissioner Petraco. Here. Commissioner Scarpelli. Here. Mayor Tucci. Here. All present, Mayor. Thank you so much. I see we have uh, minutes this evening for July 6, 2021 and July 20th, 2021. Motion minutes. Second. Second. Commissioner Kelly. Aye. Commissioner Evans. Aye. Commissioner Petraco. Aye. Commissioner Scarpelli. Aye. Mayor Tucci. Aye. Communications correspondence, please. Thank you, Mayor. We have three. Uh, VFW post uh, number 493 has submitted an application for a social affair permit to hold a VFW adult Halloween party event on Saturday, October 30th, 2021, from 7 p.m. to 11 p.m. at 271 Washington Avenue in Nutley. The second is the Rotary Club of Nutley, <clears throat> excuse me, has submitted a letter for their annual car show to be held on Sunday, October 17th from uh, 1 to 6 p.m. on Franklin Avenue between Chestnut Street and Center Street, and also a draw of 50-50 cash raffle. And the third is the Nutley Chamber of Commerce has submitted an event application to host Santa's arrival on November 26th with a rain date of November 27th at the Nutley Park Oval from 12.30 to 3.30 p.m. I need a motion, please. Move we'll all three. I need a second. Second. Commissioner Kelly. Aye. Commissioner Evans. Aye. Commissioner Petraco. Aye. <clears throat> Commissioner Scarpelli. Aye. Mayor Tucci. Aye. And that's it for communications, Mayor. Thank you so much. Uh, reports, Commissioner Petraco. Yes, I have my public safety um, report for August 2021. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Commissioner Scarpelli. Mayor, I have uh, various monthly reports for the Department of Public Works. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Evans. Code enforcement report for August 21. Thank you, Mayor. Excellent. Thank you so much. Bills, Madam Clerk. Thank you, Mayor. Bill list for September 21, 2021. Public affairs, $193,575.53. Revenue and finance, $2,631,594.15. Public safety, $72,570.07. Public Works, $52,977.86. Parks and Public Property, $133,005.00. Water Utility, $325,715.39. Payroll as of September 3rd, 2021. Regular payroll total, $928,716.54. Overtime payroll total, $47,566.82. Total payroll, $976,283.36 for a grand total of $4,385,721.36. Move the bills. Second. Commissioner Kelly. Aye. Commissioner Evans. Aye. Commissioner Petraco. Aye. Commissioner Scarpelli. Aye. Mayor Tucci. Aye. That's it for bills, Mayor. Thank you so much. Public comment on agenda items only, please. All persons addressing the Board of Commissioners regarding community concerns should approach the microphone and provide their name and address for the record. Unless further time is granted by the Board, each person shall limit their address to three minutes. All remarks to the Board and its individual members must be addressed to the Mayor. The Mayor may defer citizens' comments to the appropriate member of the Board. Rory Moore, 462 Chestnut Street. Mayor Tucci, resolution 232-21. I'm interested, after the boilerplate, 
I'm in interested in paragraphs two and three. I'd like to try to get an explanation on that. You're speaking of the raffle applications, Larry? 232-21. Two, two, it's Mr. Petracos. It's for Inglesino for the emergency squad. Am I reading this correctly? What number is it? I'm sorry, I was looking at the bill list. Commissioner Petraco, 232-21. I think I can answer. Them. Yes, Commissioner, please. That's yours. Yeah. I think that was actually um, for the dissolution of the squad. Correct. Correct. Um, yeah. That's what I was trying to find out because I remember last meeting you said it was dissolved, everything was done. But I, 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 to my knowledge, it was. I think this is just a bill that was pending. So I, I think that it was dissolved and we're just catching up to the bill. So they're not, Inglesino is not doing anything with teaching a class. If you look at paragraph three, what, that's what. Which one are you looking at? Resolution 232-21. I think I'm reading that correctly. Commissioner Alfonso for talk about. Where's the paragraph? Commissioner, I, I can answer that. That resolution 232-21 has nothing to do with teaching any class. It says, as you indicated, tying up the bills for the dissolution of the ambulance uh, squad. I, I'm sorry, I, I can't, I can't hear you. I said it's, I can't, it's the, it has nothing to do with teaching any classes. It has to do with the legal work regarding the dissolution of the squad. And this just catches up to the bill, that's all. May, may I, Mayor? May, may. Sure, Commissioner. Mr. Moore, to your question, I think you're referring to paragraph where it talks about uh, academic instruction. Yes, okay. yes. What that's defining, uh, it says you can hire a special counsel where there are a special skill or knowledge involved. And it's all the, all the ordinance, all the resolution is stating is what are the full requirements of what you could uh, uh, identify a special counsel for. In this case, we're, we're not, he's not going to do any training. It was simply as the commissioner said, which was the uh, specialized service to deal with uh, this, the dissolution of an emergency rescue squad. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Moore. Anyone else? Okay, we'll move on to uh, Board of Commissioner announcements. Commissioner Scarpelli, anything this evening? I have nothing tonight, Mayor. Commissioner Petraco? You know, Mayor, I have to tell you, being a mayor myself here for a few years, I have to say, I think you outdid all the previous mayors with that, that spectacular... Oh, I got to stop now. Mayor, I'm do I have sorry. to stop? So Adam Clark, can you shut I'll that off, stop. He was beginning to say something nice about me. Please stop. Sorry. <laughs> I timed out, Mayor. But I have to say, you know what? I know that um, taxes come up a lot in Notley, but I have to tell you that fireworks, I think, was really the best show around and um, brought people out. I finally seen some people with smiles on their face. The Duprees were, were excellent. It was just a wonderful night and i have to tell you the fireworks were unbelievable so kudos to you and your department for pulling for pulling that off that thank you commissioner and, and you know that was a team effort all right that was uh, parks department it was police it was fire it was ems it was dpw it was finance it was public affairs it was everyone pulling together and i i think it was the right event at the right time because people wanted to get out. They wanted to see their, their friends and their neighbors. And it was, it started a little rocky. We got a little wet in the beginning. All right, but uh, thank God the skies cleared, it dried up. The Duprees were phenomenal. Uh, the food trucks were great. Uh, we had video trailers, we had face painting, we had balloon artists and the fireworks. Yes, some days you get lucky and the fireworks were just phenomenal. So thank you for that. I appreciate that. Commissioner Evans. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I'll echo Commissioner Petraco's comments as well. Uh, uh, I also, uh, I, I need to uh, just say into the record, uh, we did hold the 2021 uh, tax sale. Uh, 13 properties were part of the tax sale this year. There were no water uh, uh, assessments that were included in the tax sale. Since the tax sale, three of the properties that were subject to the proceeding have actually redeemed their certificates 
uh, and I expect that to, to go down uh, further. Um, there weren't any water included because uh, by uh, state uh, executive order, uh, those items would be excluded because of the COVID in environment. Uh, but we had a very successful tax sale. Thank you. Great, thank you, Commissioner. Nice job. Commissioner Kelly. Thank you, Mayor. And, and like everyone has said, it was a great event on Friday. Kudos to you. Uh, I also have two announcements. Uh, the first one being uh, uh, garbage. Uh, I know that's been on everyone's mind lately. Uh, we had nine trucks in this weekend. I believe we got all the trash. However, I understand that people will be putting out trash, uh, item related storm damage trash and debris. Uh, going forward still because uh, sometimes maybe their insurance adjuster couldn't get to them yet and they were told to hold it back. Uh, so it, going forward, if you could put that out on Wednesday, we're gonna have an additional truck designated just to collect the, the additional storm damage items in addition to regular bulk pickup. Just if you're putting out both, make sure you separate both. Uh, and also uh, the Public Affairs and Health Department were able to get uh, about 140 additional uh, COVID vaccines, first and second dose. Uh, so if you're still looking for a vaccine in, uh, in mid-October, we'll be having a, a vaccine clinic. Uh, just uh, look out for uh, more information, uh, that more information will follow on that. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Commissioner. I have uh, three items that I'd like to address this evening. The first is, um, I don't know if we can, we can follow up on what happened last Friday, but on Sunday, uh, the 26th from 11 o'clock uh, in the afternoon, in the morning till four o'clock in the afternoon, we will be once again holding our festival in the park. We expect it to be another phenomenal event, again, supported by this entire board of commissioners. Uh, so I encourage everyone to come out and enjoy the festivities. Um, I also was on a call this morning uh, with the governor's office concerning uh, some of the resources available uh, to folks, uh, both our residents and our merchants in town. So we have a, they issued a U.S. Uh, small business administration fact sheet for disaster loans, what the rates are, what the terms could be, what the eligible activities are. So I'll be forwarding this to the OEM office, uh, Commissioner Petraco, uh, to be put up on the site. And we'll also post it on, on the township uh, website and each of our Facebook pages, if that's fine. So people can get more information to see how, how help can uh, be forthcoming. Um, the last uh, announcement I have this evening, in, in, in a conversation and consultation that I had with uh, Commissioner Scarpelli uh, and the other commissioners, uh, but it was Commissioner Scarpelli's initiative and we need to give credit where credit is due. We are going to be attempting to form a, a third river mayor's group, all right? Uh, to take a comprehensive approach to our collective issues and our flooding problems on a regional basis. And pretty much we're, we're, we're gonna contact all of the uh, all of the communities that that touch the Third River: Belleville, Bloomfield, Clifton, Little Falls, Montclair, Woodland Park, and of course uh, Nutley, to see what we can do and what forces we can marshal uh, to take a good hard look at this and see if there are any remedies. Um, my guess is at some point we'll, we'll probably be bringing in uh, the DEP and maybe even the Army Corps of Engineers. All right, uh, for assistance and for guidance. Uh, but I think this is something uh, that's long overdue. Commissioner, I, I thank you um, for your input on this and your suggestion. And I think moving forward, if we can address some of these issues on a comprehensive, in a comprehensive way, perhaps we can avoid some of the devastation that, uh, that our folks experienced. All right, I see we have uh, no ordinance introductions this evening. Uh, we have no ordinances on second readings or public hearings. So we will move into resolutions. Commissioner Kelly. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, the first one I have on tonight is resolution number 24821. This is on behalf of all, all of us. Uh, whereas in the five centuries since Christopher Columbus, the son of Genoa, Italy, first set sail across the Atlantic Ocean, Countless individuals have followed the course he charged to seek a new life in America. Since that time, generations of Italian Americans have helped shape our society and steal the steer the course of our history. During Italian American Heritage and Culture Month, we recognize the rich heritage of Americans of Italian descent and celebrate their immeasurable contributions to our nation. 
bound by enduring values of faith and family, Italian Americans have flourished in all areas of our public and economic life while preserving their proud Italian traditions. Whereas upon arrival in the United States, the Italian American community faced racial, social, and religious discrimination, yet Italian Americans have persevered with hope and hard work to reach for the American dream and helped build our great country and this community. Proud service members, they have also defended the liberty and integrity of the United States since the Revolutionary War. Whereas today, the legacy of these intrepid immigrants is found in the millions of American men, women, and children of Italian descent who strengthen and enrich our country. Whereas Amer Italian Americans operate thriving businesses, teach our children, serve at all levels of government, and succeed in myriad occupations drawing on the courage and principles of their forebears. They lead in every facet of American life, dedicating their knowledge and skills to the growth of our country. Whereas Italian and Italian American Heritage Month is an appropriate time to recognize, recognize the enormous contributions the Italian and Italian American people have made to this country and the world throughout our history, including generals, admirals, doctors, philosophers, statesmen, musicians, athletes, and Nobel laureates. Whereas Italian and Italian American Heritage Month is held to salute the Italian and Italian American community and to exhibit appreciation for their culture and their heritage that have immeasurably enriched the lives of the people of this nation and the world. Whereas the strength and success of the United States, the vitality of all our community, of, of our communities, and the effectiveness of our American society depend in great measure upon the distinctive and sterling qualities demonstrated by people of diverse races, heritage, and ethnicities, exemplified by the members of the Italian and Italian American community who share with us their rich and unique heritage. Whereas it is fitting and proper that October of each year be observed as Italian and Italian American Heritage Month throughout the United States. And therefore be it resolved by the Board of Commissioners in the Township of Nutley, County of Essex, State of New Jersey, recognize the October 2021 as Italian American Heritage Month. Now therefore be it resolved, further resolved that the Board of Commissioners in the Township of Nutley, County of Essex, State of New Jersey, esteems the integral role of Italian Americans play in the economy, culture, and identity of the United States and urges everyone to observe Italian American Heritage Month with the appropriate programs and activities that celebrate the contributions of Italian Americans to the United States. Hashtag Nutley Italian American, hashtag Italy, hashtag Italian Heritage, hashtag Italian American Heritage Month, so moved. Second. Commissioner Kelly. Aye. Commissioner Evans. Aye. Commissioner Petrocco. Aye. Commissioner Scarpelli. Aye. Mayor Tucci. Aye, I'm not sure I understand all those hashtags, but I believe they're all positive. So thank you for that, Commissioner. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, the next one I have is, uh, is, is definitely another important one. Uh, it's resolution number 245-21, whereas in one in, whereas about one in eight U.S. women, about 12.4% will develop invasive breast cancer over the course of their lifetime, or, or of her lifetime. In 20, whereas in 2021, an estimated 281,550 new cases of invasive breast cancer are expected to be diagnosed in women in the U.S., along with 49,290 new cases of non-invasive in situ breast cancer. Although rare, men, men get breast cancer too. In 2021, an estimated... 26,500 men will be diagnosed with breast cancer this year in the US and approximately 530 will die. Whereas about 400, or sorry, excuse me, 43,600 women in the United States are expected to die in 2020 from breast cancer, though death rates have been decreasing since 1989. Whereas breast cancer is the most common cancer in American women except for skin cancers. It is estimated that in 2021, approximately 30% of all new women cancer diagnoses will be breast cancer. There are over 3.8 million breast cancer survivors in the United States, whereas recent strides in early detection, including the use of mammography and prompt treatment have significantly reduced the suffering and deaths caused by this disease. Whereas the Department of Public Affairs will continue to work with Nutley Thriving Survivors and nonprofit corporation to develop programs to increase awareness of the symptoms of breast cancer and to support those women and men who may be diagnosed with the disease. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Commissioners of the Township of Nutley, County of Essex, State of New Jersey, recognize October as Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Be it further resolved that we urge all women and their families in the Township of Nutley to seek assistance in obtaining facts and information about breast cancer, man out, mammography, avail and available support groups for victims and to participate in programs scheduled this year for residents of the township and breast cancer su survivors. Be it further resolved that residents are encouraged to participate in the Nutley Thriving Survivors virtual walk Sunday, October 3rd, 2021 
at 7 p.m. at the John H. Walker Middle School, as well as the 19th Annual Thriving Survivor Brunch, uh, Sunday, October 24th, 2021, at 11 a.m. at Glenridge Country Club. Uh, hashtag Nutley Thriving Survivors, hashtag Breast Cancer Awareness, hashtag Breast Cancer Walk, hashtag Think Pink, and hashtag Nutley Cares. So moved. Second. Second. Commissioner Kelly. Aye. Commissioner Evans. Aye. Commissioner Petrocco. Aye. Commissioner Scarpelli. Aye. Mayor Tucci. Aye. <clears throat> uh, the next two uh, resolutions I have are also important resolutions and uh, they honor our veterans. Uh, whereas meeting in Philadelphia on October 13th, 1775, the Second Continental Congress formed the Continental Navy as a means of capturing munitions from forces of Britain. Whereas on, on December 22nd, 1775, Commodore Isaac Hopkins was appointed commander in chief of the Continental Navy. And his position was made equal to that of commander in chief of the Continental Army. Whereas the Continental Navy was disbanded in 1785, but was reestablished as an official department on April 30th, 1798. Today, the US Navy recognizes the date of October 13th, 1775 as its official birth date of the Continental Navy. <coughs> Whereas the United States Navy and its more than 300,000 sailors command our oceans and protect our seas with over 90 jobs day and night against all enemies. Whereas from the revolution to the civil war, to the world wars, to the present day, the township of Nutley is thankful for and is proud to support the United States Navy. On the occasion of the Navy's 246th birthday, the township remembers those who have sacrificed to serve their nation in the Navy and thanks and recognizes the Navy veterans who call Nutley home today. Now, therefore, it be resolved that the Board of Commissioners in Township of Nutley, County of Essex, State of New Jersey, recognizes and celebrates the Navy's, the United States Navy on its 246th birthday. Hashtag U.S. Navy, hashtag Navy, hashtag Navy birthday, hashtag Navy celebration, hashtag U.S. military, hashtag Nutley thanks you. So moved. Second. Uh, Commissioner Kelly? Aye. Commissioner Evans? Aye. Commissioner Petraco? Aye. Commissioner Scarpelli? Aye. Mayor Tucci? Aye. Whereas on October 26th, uh, National Day of Deployed annually honors United States military personnel deployed around the goal, globe. Whereas the, this, the, whereas the designation recognizes all of the brave military personnel who have been deployed, are sacrificing or have sacrificed their lives to defend our country. It also acknowledges their families who are separated from them during the deployment and the sacrifices they make in order for their family members to serve our country. Whereas Shell Michaels Ar Arbel Founded National Day of the Deployed in 2006, Ms. Arbel approached the then North Dakota Governor John Hoven for support of a, a North Dakota proclamation for the day. For the day, Governor Hoven was the first governor of the United States to recognize deployed troops in a formal proclamation. Whereas in 2011, Senator John Hoven led efforts to, and co-sponsored Senate Resolution 295 for National Day of Honor. On October 18th, 2011, the resolution, resolution passed unanimously for the first day honoring deployed troops and their families. As of 2012, all 50 states observed National Day of the Deployed. Whereas the from the revolution to the Civil War, to the World Wars, to the present day, the Township of Nellie is thankful for and is proud to support the service members and their families. And therefore, it be resolved that the Board of Commissioners of the Township of Nellie, County of Essex, State of New Jersey, recognizes and celebrates October 26, 2021, National Day of the Deployed. Hashtag Day of the Deployed, hashtag Nellie thanks you, hashtag support our troops. So moved. Second. Commissioner Kelly. Aye. Commissioner Evans? Aye. Commissioner Petraco? Commissioner Kelly, I'm only going to vote yes for this if you teach me about these hashtags. You know, we're from a different generation, but that's great. I vote proudly yes. Commissioner Scarpelli? Aye. Mayor Tucci? Hashtag aye. Hashtag aye. Uh, just a, a brief explanation. Uh, if people are out celebrating or, or observing the day or the, the, the remembrance, uh, it's just something they could put in their social media profile. So if anyone who then can go and search the hashtag and we could see everyone and how they're celebrating. Very nice. Thank you. Good. Mr. Petraco. Yes, sir. I have no hashtags tonight. <laughs> Be resolved by the Board of Commissioners Township in Nauti County of Essex, State of New Jersey, that the resolution number 211 dash 21 adopted on September 7, 2021, entitled Resolution for Body. Warren camera grant is hereby rescinded. These are these are getting rescinded because I believe the vendors changed the specs on the equipment. Is that why we're, we, this is the second time we're rescinding? For, for this one in particular, we needed to add a grant number on it for the DCA. Okay. So just correction, that's all it is. Good. Second. Commissioner Kelly. Aye. Commissioner Evans. Aye. Commissioner Petraco. Aye. 
Commissioner Scarpelli. Aye. Mayor Tucci. Aye. Be resolved by the Township of Nutley in the County of Essex, State of New Jersey, as follows. The Township of Nutley is authorized to accept an award grant from the State of New Jersey Department of Law of Public Safety in the amount of $122,563 under the S SFY 21 Body Worn Camera Grant Program. Award number 21-BWC-325, Mayor Mortucci and the Chief Thomas Strumola are authorized to execute and the township clerk to attest to an award in connection with the grant and any and all documents connect in connection with this grant. The township of Nutley is accepting the grant of funds to, for the purpose described in the application. Time period, April 1st, 2021 through December 31st, 2025. Certified copy of this resolution shall be provided by the office of the township clerk to each of the following Mayor Tucci, Township Attorney, Chief Financial Advisor, Police Department, um, Office of Attorney General. And I believe that's it. I move the resolution. Second. Commissioner Kelly. Aye. Commissioner Evans. Aye. Commissioner Petraco. Aye. Commissioner Scarpelli. Aye. Mayor Tucci. Aye. Okay, whereas the Township of Nutley received sealed bids for surplus equipment no longer in use by the Township of Township on September 8, 2021, whereas the Jersey won auto sales, 495 Tunnelly Avenue, Jersey City, New Jersey was the highest bidder for 2003 Crown Victoria mileage, $102,217 miles for $76. Now, therefore, it be resolved by the Board of Commissioners, Township of Nutley, County of Essex, State of New Jersey, that the surplus items be sold to Liberty Motors, Inc. and Jersey One Auto Sales. I move resolution. Second. Commissioner Kelly. Aye. Commissioner Evans. Aye. Commissioner Petraco. Aye. Commissioner Scarpelli. Aye. Mayor Tucci. Aye. Resolution of the Township Commission of the Township of Nautilus authorizing the engagement of Inglesima, Webster, Wislick, and Taylor LLC as counsel for the Township of Nautilus concerning Township Public Safety and Ambulance Services and Specialized Legal Matters. This is kind of long, so to save a little time, I'm gonna be when we talked about this one, I'm gonna pass it as written. Um 232-21. I move resolution. Second. Commissioner Kelly. Aye. Commissioner Evans. Aye. Commissioner Petraco. Aye. Commissioner Scarpelli. Aye. Mayor Tucci. Aye. Whereas the Nutley Police Department employees, Sleo's two officers, the Sleo two officers have full police powers while on duty. Whereas the Nutley Police Department has appointed Joseph Milano, Joseph Leon and Michael Lambrugo as a SLEO two officer. Okay. For one year beginning January 1st, um, 2001, 2021 through December 31st, 2021 and Mark DeLitta from September 20th, 2021 through December 31st, 2021. And now therefore be resolved by the Board of Commissioners, Township of Nulli, County of Best, the State of New Jersey, Mayor and the Township Clerk that the Nutley Police Department is authorized to appoint Joseph Alano, Joseph Leon, and Michael Lambrugo as Sleo II from January 1st through December 31st, 2021, and Mark DeLitta from September 20th, 2021 through December 31st, 2021. I move the resolution. Second. Commissioner Kelly. Aye. Commissioner Evans. Aye. Commissioner Petraco. Aye. Commissioner Scarpelli. Aye. Mayor Tucci. Aye. That's all I have, Mayor. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Scarpelli, anything this evening? Nothing on the agenda tonight, Mayor. Thank you for being here, Commissioner. Commissioner Evans, anything? I have nothing, believe it or not. Uh, it's hard to believe. I'm happy but thank, to be here, though. Thank you also for being here. All right, I have a few. Uh, my first is, uh, whereas raffle applications have been received from the following organizations, the Rotary Club of Nutley, license number 30-21, for an on-premise 50-50 cash raffle on October 17, 2021. Whereas the applications have been reviewed and approved by the municipal clerk and the police department, now, therefore, be it resolved by the Board of Commissioners of the Township of Nutley and the County of Essex State of New Jersey that the aforementioned licenses are approved. Municipal Clerk is authorized to issue said licenses. I move the resolution. Second. Commissioner Kelly. Aye. Commissioner Evans. Aye. Commissioner Petraco. Aye. Commissioner Scarpelli. Aye. Mayor Tucci. Aye. And my next 10 resolutions um, are, are redundant in many regards, so I'm going to... Uh, abbreviate them. So resolutions 235 to 243 will read as follows. Uh, council, I can move these all together? Yes. Thank you so much. Whereas on Sunday, October 10, 2021, the Nutley Belleville Columbus Day and Italian Heritage Month Parade Committee will celebrate its 39th annual Columbus Day festivities 
commemorating Columbus' historic voyage to the New World. And whereas the Nutley Belleville Columbus Day Parade Committee has a long history of recognizing community members that have contributed to the rich heritage of the Italian American culture and celebrate their immeasurable contributions to our community as well as our nation. And whereas the Nutley Belleville Columbus Day and Italian Heritage Month Parade Committee will celebrate its annual honorary dinner tonight, Tuesday, September 21st, 2021 at Nanina's in the Park, Belleville, New Jersey, and whereas the 2021 honorees have demonstrated exemplary service to their community and have therefore been designated for these special honors. As Grand Marshal Anthony Pope, Lifetime Achievement Award recipient, Joseph Zara, Italian Heritage Award, Vincent Skoka, Belleville Woman of the Year, Elaine Perna, Belleville Man of the Year, Martin Giardina Lutz, Nutley Woman of the Year, Nella Ciccino, Nutley Man of the Year, Paul Cafone, 2021 Renaissance men, Michael Chifo and Brian Banda. 2021 Italian business um, man of the year, Anthony Biondi and the community excellence award awarded to Mary Ellen Klein. Whereas those who enhance the well-being and vitality of their community and have shown a long and sustained commitment to honoring and preserving their culture have earned the recognition of this board as well as the citizens of this community. I therefore move this resolution. Second. Commissioner Kelly. Aye. Commissioner Evans. Aye. I offer uh, congratulations to all of the honorees. Uh, Mayor, I'm sure you'll extend those best wishes on behalf of the board to everyone. I absolutely will. Aye. Commissioner Petraco. Aye. Commissioner Scarpelli. Aye. Mayor Tucci. Congratulations to everyone noted in that resolution. I proudly vote aye. Be it resolved by the Board of Commissioners of Township Nutley in the County of Essex State in New Jersey that the Treasurer B and she is hereby authorized to refund payments for recreation programs in the amounts listed below. The address 291 Park Avenue, girls softball for 2021 in the amount of $45, 13 White Terrace for our, our uh, play in our theater program, 2021, $150, 138 Oak Ridge Rec Soccer for $45, 171 Mountain View Fall Festival in the amount of $100, 17 Jamie Court for a football program in the amount of $105, and 18 Blum Lane Rec Soccer in the amount of $25. I move the resolution. Second. Commissioner Kelly. Aye. Commissioner Evans. Aye. Commissioner Petraco. Aye. Commissioner Scarpelli. Aye. Mayor Tucci. Aye. Whereas Township Nutley has a need for the services of a special redevelopment council for the redevelopment of Diamond Spring site through a non-fair, non-open contract as a professional service pursuant to the provisions of NJSA 19 44A 20.5 and NJSA 20A 11-1 as amended. And whereas John P. Inglesimo of the law firm of Inglesimo, Webster, White Cascala, and Taylor, 600 Parsippany Road, Parsippany, New Jersey, has ably and continuously provided various special development councils to the township over the years. And whereas John Inglesimo of Inglesino, Webster, White Cascala, and Texas, and Taylor, have submitted a 2021 fee schedule to provide such services at an hourly rate of $215 for legal services by attorneys and an hourly rate of $100 for services by paralegal or law clerks, and whereas the contract will not exceed $25,000 for the period January 1, 2021 through December 31st, 2021, and funds are available from account number 1-01012205, which will be certified by the Chief Financial Officer said certification subject to the adoption of the 2020 municipal budget. That has already occurred, so I don't know why this that's in here, but that's okay. Whereas the law firm of Inglesino, Webster, Mike Cascala, and Taylor has completed and submitted a business entity disclosure certification, which certifies that they have not made any reportable disqualifying contributions to a political or candidate committee in the Township of Nutley in the previous one year that would violate NJSA 15 colon 44A 20.5 or the Township Local Unit Pay to Play Ordinance or NJ Election Law disclosure requirements and that the contract will bar John P. Inglesimo from making any reportable contributions through the term of the contract. Now, therefore, be resolved that the mayor and board of commissioners of Township of Nutley County of Essex, State of New Jersey, contract for Special Development Council as follows. The mayor and township clerk are hereby authorized and directed to execute, seal, and deliver a contract for professional legal services with John P. Inglesino of his firm, Parsippany, New Jersey, pursuant to a non-fair and non-open process in accordance with NJSA 19 44A 20.5 for a term beginning January 1, 2021 through December 31st, 2021, 
for the stated hourly rates not to exceed 25,000. A copy of this resolution, as well as the contract and the business disclosure entity certification and business entity disclosure of campaign contributions shall be placed on file with the clerk. And C, a copy of this resolution shall be published as required by law within 10 days of its passage. I move the resolution. Second. Second. <clears throat> Commissioner Kelly. Aye. Commissioner Evans. Aye, uh, just a point of clarification. Uh, we, since we did adopt the 21 budget, I uh, just want to, on the record, these amounts were anticipated as part of that adoption. Thank you so much, Commissioner. Aye. Uh, Commissioner Petraco? Aye. Commissioner Scarpelli? Aye. Mayor Tucci? Aye. Whereas the Township of Nutley has a need for services of Special Redevelopment Council for downtown redevelopment of the downtown area, including the Ciccolini site through a non-fair, non-open contract as a professional service pursuant to the provisions of NJSA 19 colon 44A 20.5 and NJSA 20A colon 11-1 as amended and whereas John Ingosimo of his firm Parsippany has ably and continuously provided various special development council to the township over the years. And whereas Mr. Ingosimo will uh, has submitted a 2021 fee schedule to provide such services as an hourly rate of 215 for legal services by attorneys an hourly rate of $100 for services by paralegal or law clerks. And whereas the contract will not exceed 25,000 for the period January 1, 2021 through December 31st, 2021, and funds are available from account 1-01-012-205, which will be certified by the chief, which have been certified by the chief financial officer and anticipated in the 2021 municipal budget. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the mayor and board of commissioners township of Nutley County of Essex State in New Jersey for special redevelopment council as files. The mayor and clerk are hereby authorized and directed to execute, seal, and deliver a contract for professional legal services with John Inglesimo of his firm, pursuant to a non-fair and non-open process in accordance with NJSA 19-44A25 for a term beginning January 1, 2021 to December 31st, 2021 for the stated hourly rates not to exceed $25,000. Be a copy of this resolution as well as the contract and business disclosure entity certification and business entity disclosure of campaign contributions shall be placed on file with the clerk and see a copy of the resolution shall be published as required by law within 10 days of its passage. I move the resolution. Second. Commissioner Kelly. Aye. Commissioner Evans. I, as amended mayor by you, that it was included in the budget. Commissioner Petraco? Thank you. I vote aye. Commissioner Scarpelli? Aye. Mayor Tucci? Aye. Whereas resolution number 268-20 was adopted by the Board of Commissioners of Township of Nutley, County of Essex, State of New Jersey, to award a contract to Integrity Roofing, 1385 Witherspoon Street, Rowley, New Jersey, for the upgrading of the skylights at the Nutley Public Library on November 17, 2020. And whereas Integrity Roofing...
received the low sap information from the, the uh, volunteer uh, chiefs department. Uh, once we do that, we process it immediately. If they provide it to us in a timely manner, we will we will publish it in a timely manner. It's supposed to be the first, and it, it is supposed to be published. Mr. Moore, I, the, unfortunately, as you know, from our prior discussions, um, we are at the, the, the uh, we have to wait for the chief to provide the information to us, the, uh, the volunteer chief. Once they do that, then we can process it and submit the, pay, the uh, payment request. So um, it's not necessarily always in our hands. I'm not sure about the October one date, but I will uh, take a look at it. I'll take care of it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I, I do have basically one question on the Ciccolini properties and the Diamond Springs. You're having that meeting uh, Thursday night, I believe. It's DMR, I believe it's an, infra an informational meet, I, I believe. I believe the secretary called me this, this afternoon. Yes. There is no, if I understand, when I read both, the both reports. It's just, it's just for the Diamond Springs property. Yes, the yes. Property. Yes, okay. The, the only reason I'm shaping the two questions is that DMR is doing both surveys. But I didn't see in the one for Diamond Springs, there was no actual what we were going to build. We just said there was a need for redevelopment. Am, did I understand that report correctly? Mr. Moore, I'm, I'm not sure if you understood it correctly, but we, we're, we don't know what we're going to build here. The purpose of this meeting is to have a conversation, a casual conversation with the neighbors uh, around Diamond Springs, all right, to give them all the facts and all the background on all the issues surrounding that property and to solicit their comments to see what they would like to see there. All right, so we will, we will then take that information and give them all of the, the accurate and true information surrounding that, including you know the, the lawsuit, the possibilities of what could go there and what could not go there, uh, and solicit from them their comments and their feelings about uh, how they feel this board should proceed. Will so it's pretty, uh, it's pretty unprecedented because I'm not sure that we have ever done this before. No, you never did. Uh, so it's, uh, we're breaking some new ground here where we're soliciting some comment. We wanna hear from our people. We are your representatives, believe it or not. And we always wanna act in your best interest. And sometimes we just need to sit down with you and ask you what you believe your best interest is. Will you be doing something similar to for the Ciccolini property anytime um, soon? Perhaps, uh, you know, as you the know, DMR we, we put out a request for an expression of interest. They're due back on October 1st. Um, we will review them and, and perhaps we will, we will hold the same thing. Let's see, how, let's see how this one goes. We're breaking some new ground. If it's as positive as I believe it, it, it could be, uh, then probably. That, the only reason I'm, I'm, I'm asking yes. is the, D, the D, uh, DMR did publish the report for the Chickalini building with mm -hmm. the same, this is need of development, but there's no plan. And if you're gonna be that courtesy to the township I would think you would do the same thing for the Chickalini building. Mr. Moore, as I know you are aware, because you've been coming to these meetings for many, many years, you know, at the appropriate time, we will, we will disclose all of the information that we have and share with the community all of, everything that's, that's in their best interest and what we believe is in the best interest of the township. I'm going to hold you to that. Yeah, you absolutely <laughs> should. Thank you. Carmine Alessio, 81 East Center Street, not like while you have Mr. Tucci over there uh, answering questions. I, I just like to ask him a question about um, uh, the National Flood Fund grant that's available September 30th of uh, 2021, and uh, it'll go on to uh, January 28th, uh, 2022. If we're doing anything in reference to touch and base with that because my question evolved from
I went into Elm Street and I happened to service on that area with my business on that street. And the lady had to redo her whole basement and the whole nine yards of everything with substantial, like, devastating damage to her car and everything. And uh, here it is, two years later, that person fixed up the place and got the hell out of it. You know, she didn't want to hang around there. And now I, this, this storm I drove by and I noticed the devastation reoccurred. So that's my concern. My concern is all over town as well as that specific area in town, like the CVS from what the word on the street is, is they're not coming back by Vidiello's on Harrison Street. So I think that the quote unquote, like should be answered like as to when, when, like Mr. Moore came up here and asked his question, but there's no answer like to his question as to when, when I understand you're gonna have a meeting with these other uh, people that are involved in flood issues, but like, when is this gonna happen? This has been going on for like, since I've been in this town, like my family's been here for like a hundred years and it gets worse. It's like 60 years into the making to where these brooks flood out. And there is, there's grants available. It's a special brook grant. I don't understand how we can float bonds here and there and everywhere and not take a, a, a concern about the flooding. The flooding destroys the, the residents and their, uh, and, and, and their life, what they invest in, their home. That's my question to you. Are we gonna have anything to do with the 160 million that is available presently, September 30th, and to follow the criteria that it'll take to get these grants that will like maybe help us? Because I have my own idea how to, how to straighten the matter out. I'm not And as far as I could recollect what they, I, I really didn't read, but I know that they were at the parks department and- um, Actually, they were at the annex, but go ahead. Well, what, yeah. I, I'm not, look, you okay, know what? Mm -hmm. I, I think I'm doing pretty good up here. and I'm trying to get- I, I think you're doing very right, well. And I know you're, 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 you're trying to, you know, answer what I'm saying, but mm -hmm. there was something going on where I feel through when you read this stuff, that it's something that the residents have to do to apply for an application. The residents, now is it up to the residents? As far as I saw for all of these years, the residents fix up and they get out of here. They're not gonna stick around waiting for another storm. And that's, that's from the bottom of my heart. That's a God's mm -hmm. honest truth. So, you know what? I see this all over town. And in my neck of the woods, if you would allow me, I know my time's probably running up, but that's not why I came up here to speak. Mm -hmm. I have another, I'm going to try to make it quick. Would you allow me like three extra minutes to get my point across? The reason why I came here. Okay. I, I'd like to direct my question to Mr. Evans. Okay. Well, let, let, let me answer your, I mean, let, like, me, let me answer your, some of your questions first. Okay. All right. Then, but I, will you give me three minutes or whatever? I don't know if I'll, I'll give you three minutes, okay. but I'll give you more time okay. To, okay. to ask okay. your question. All right. All right. And, and I, I, before I even address anything that you've said, I just want to thank you for, for coming forward with this information. We have a, we have a, a top notch grants person. Um, we, we aren't plugged into FEMA. All right, and the Small Business Administration, as well as uh, you know, the state of New Jersey, and through our congressional people, uh, there is action in Washington uh, to move some authorizations to provide some additional funds. 
I don't know if you were here when I mentioned it before, but we just received some SBA funding on some loans, all right, with terms and, and interest rates. Uh, FEMA was here, as I was beginning to say, all right, to assist our residents in filling out the initial paperwork so that an adjuster can be sent to their homes to see what can be covered, all right? And usually it's items that are not covered typically by a homeowner's insurance. As far as the larger picture as to climate change and uh, mitigating factors as to what's making the water come quicker and with the less severe storms, although the last storm was pretty severe, all right, but even on a heavy rainfall, there's there's significant devastation that our people go through. Well, I we're mean, going to blame the governor for that because- he no, no, I'm, not, I'm not blaming anyone no, we're for gonna, that. we're going to blame him for that. No, this, so. this is not but about here, blame. Here, this I'm, is I'm about- just playing around with can, can we Can we each talk on our own? And I'll let, let me finish and okay. then I'll be happy to listen okay. to you, okay? So what, what we're trying to do is marshal the resources here in town and help our people to apply for whatever's available there. All right. It's, this is not about blame. You know, it, it could be, it could be a result of climate change. It could be a result of uh, the open space vanishing, uh, overbuilding in some parts, or just decayed and aged infrastructure. Well, you said it, I didn't overbuild it. I said it could I be mean, that, like, that that absolutely could be one no, of the it's, it's one one thousand percent a part of it. Okay. Could right. very well like, be I could go on and on, but like mm -hmm. I understand that you're gonna get the, the National Guard, which is a free organization, to come here and address the flooding. I heard all of that, and that's a pretty good thing. But at least we're getting started on something. But I'm saying go for it, just like you people go for this and go for that. This is like productive. This is like, this is what we need, okay? You look at the parks, they're beautiful. But how about when it floods? It's a devastation. Then when they recede, it looks beautiful again. But it, people are leaving town, okay, on account of it. And it's not fair to the next person that moves in that buys a flood of a, 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 a house that get, could get flooded like the next day. Mm -hmm. but, all right, that, that's about all I have to say okay. on that. Well, Carmen, we, once again, we do agree on, on some of the issues uh, that you've raised, and we are absolutely going to go for it and do everything in our power to see what we can okay. do and provide Just somebody. so you know, there's a national, uh, there may be certain criteria. Mm -hmm. You might have to put the homes on pedal. You might have to follow a certain guideline right. for, the, for the future, but at least we can get started on something. Couldn't agree I with mean, you more. We're Carmen. not started as far as I can see. Mm -hmm. Tell me we're started, please. I like to hear that. Other than this meeting coming up this week about the flood. Well, we're, we're, we're absolutely starting. We're investigating. Well, we're investigating yeah, different yeah. areas. We're getting together with other municipalities that touch the Third River. Commissioner Scarpelli and his department are, are doing an evaluation of uh, the storm sewer and the sanitary sewer system uh, to try and come up with some answers. So, yes, absolutely, we are starting. And, you know, like you, you mentioned storm sewers and that years ago, these guys used to get out there after the storm, they used to clean the sewers and, and that. I know one resident who, who's by the hot dog stand down on Franklin Avenue towards Belleville. Mm -hmm. He went to the dollar store, this person, and he saw that the, the viaduct where, where, where uh, uh, Vidiello's is was loaded with stuff. And we were supposed to get a storm that night. Fortunately, we didn't get one because these people are trying to live. I mean, like, it's obvious that, and it's not fair. It's just not right. I mean, that's all I have to say. About that. Okay, thank you, Carmen. All right, you have anything else? Maybe you can enlighten I don't have anything else right now. You have anything else? But this stuff <laughs> that you're talking about yes. specifically for residents. Well, and no, no, it's for residents and it's for businesses. They're, the, they're, one, they're, the one I'm talking about, the national right. um, uh, fund here, grant, mm -hmm. includes the buildings, and they, 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 they look at these buildings that are being like built, um, multi-mixed multi, um, use buildings, and you have to fit certain criteria right. when you do it. Mm -hmm. So, you, you know, I, I mean, I, people are fed up with the mixed use buildings. Now, I could go on and on and on about zoning, okay? And, and this well, let, and let's not go on and on. I, I don't, don't want to go on and on. Yeah. I, I want to we'll tackle the flooding right down. Now, mm -hmm. that's the most important. And that's what, we're, that's what we're working on. Mr. Evans, 
today I had, I, you know, I, I, I have property I live on East Seneca, okay? I have a variance right here for 99 East Seneca that clearly states in the past, Barron Brothers at 99 East Center Street has a variance to build an extended um, office on their property, but they must meet the criteria of a family owned business with three people that are there. And during the testimony, they stated that's what, what they were going to do. They weren't going to like uh, do anything that would like jeopardize the, the health and safety and welfare of any of the neighbors in the neighborhood. Okay, that's what was that was what was ordered by the variance board. Okay, now I've been complaining for years about it because it was the old Viola Garage, and all they do is. It, it, it is, they have flatbeds that deliver cars and, and, and they block the street and everything else. Now we're redeveloping. We put all of these units down here on East Center Street. And when you get in your car and go up the hill, you have a flatbed trying to like, it's right across the road. Okay. Today I had a little confrontation. I stopped here. I waited 15 minutes for the flatbed to load the car on it. There's 30 cars all over the place, all on the street, and it's not legal. The variance says, stipulates, the variance goes with the property. Somebody else comes along and wants to buy the property. They can't do whatever the heck they want. They can't put 30 cars there and make a detriment to everybody else. Besides the fact that there's a lot going on. There's a lot. So my question to you, Mr. Evans, is how can the place have a variance that goes with the building, three people, family business, no cars on the sidewalk, and on any given day, there's 30 cars all over, flatbeds all over, lined up across the street to where people and pedestrians are not safe. And it's like, it never ceases to end. And that's just one little aspect of one, my, my, my course, my, my day of living today. So I said to the guy, to the man. Hey, Carmen, right can, can we wrap it up and have Commissioner Evans yeah. answer? Because yeah, we're, we're way over our time. You and know we... what this person says to me? Well, who said that? Well, I said, I'm going to go, I'm going to go to the police station and, and tell them what you said, who said that. Maybe somebody can go down it. We need a, a, a community to get together. Okay. When I have a complaint, I'm not to go to the police station and give them a, my complaint when they actually have nothing to do other than take the complaint to my paper trail so that these people don't come and do do stupid things to, to me and my family or my property, like which has happened before, quote unquote, because the zoning here is horrendous. We don't enforce. Okay, Carmen, let's let's, okay, let's let's not drift. Let's, let's ask stop. your ask your question okay, because we, we need we no 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 no, no, no we're going to stop because we never we, have come to this. It. We need to move on, Carmen. We're going to move You've on. You've had more than your three minutes. We're move Please on. ask your question. Let the commissioner answer. Okay, it. could you answer my question? You must have heard it loud and clear. Carmen, thank you for your question. I did. Um, what I will tell you that the address you stated is ninety nine East yes. Center Street. Yes. Is that the correct address? Yes. I will. I cannot answer that question tonight. Okay. I do agree with you that variances follow the property. Yes. So what is whatever the variance is attributed to that property, they own whoever the owner is, they have to comply with that. I will have the construction officials uh, go there tomorrow morning. That sounds fair enough, but you know this is a rerun, re, re, re recording of of the same thing. That just never ceases to end. Uh, I, I, as I said, I look at it this way: if the place is, it, it adheres to the variance or the code, 
then there should be no problem. Agreed. Okay. I agree with you. So now, if there is an issue. And that's not the only place there, but this is all I have time for because this is what, what, what happened. I actually went to the police station like, like, like. I, okay, Carmen, thank you. Thank you. We, we really need, we need yes, to go okay. into closed well, session. I we appreciate have... for the time, Mayor Tucci. Thank you. Thank you for all your comments. Maria Plaza, 209 Highfield Lane. This is where Commissioner Scarpelli. When was the last time he touched on it a little bit? The last time that the South. storm sewers have been cleaned in them. When was the last time that the storm sewers have been cleaned in Nutley? The storm sewers have been cleaned? Is that what you're asking? The storm sewers. You know, yeah, the, the, uh, the... We check the store, the sewers all the time. They and we also clean, clean the catch basins all the time. Um, well, none, of, none of the issues that we've seen are from uh, what we've investigated thus far are from anything to do with maintenance of the, the lines. Uh, we're looking to see if the capacity of the lines have anything to do with it. But as wow. far as the cleaning, you know, that's that's an ongoing issue. Well, I my neighbor has pictures of Harrison Street during the, uh, the storm that we recently had. And the water was coming up the storm sewers like it was Niagara Falls. It was, Falls. It was coming, in, coming into the sanitary sewer because they're being surcharged. Right. You got to remember that all those store, all the... The storm sewers go into the river, which is right there, mm -hmm. right? So once the river rises above where the storm sewer goes in, there's no place for that water to go. So it goes, the, the uh, sanitary system is, is an open system. It has the manholes, but the water can get into the manholes and that surcharges the whole system. And where it was bubbling up was further down for days across the line, not on our side. It was also bubbling up on top of Harrison Street, not all the way at the top, but halfway up. And it was like, I, I, they have pictures. It looked like an ocean with waves. This is Baza, we got 10 inches of rain I in five that. hours. I understand There's nothing that. that could be done for that. Not a thing. And, you know, we mentioned that, what, does, what is the town doing for flooding? Well, a number of years ago, not, not in the, the long future, we bought three houses on Donna Court. We created an open space there. And up until this Ida, we haven't had any flooding there. Perennially, we had to rescue people out of those three homes. We haven't had to do that. We, we went to FEMA, we got a grant, uh, we got a, a low interest loan, we bought three homes, we mitigated an area that flooded all the time. So we do do things in town to correct the correct flooding. but. You know, with a storm like Ida, there is nothing that could be done. Nothing. Well, what, did, did anybody, inv why, did, why is it that Burger King is so close to the river and they didn't get it, not a pair, of, uh, not an inch of water? It has, some what has did to they do, with do? It, it has to do with their elevation. Why did Vidiello's be able to open, who's right next to the river, why was he able to open the next day? He's, he's a little bit higher. Yeah, but it's also because they, I was there when they were, when they were moving that Burger King and they dug, I don't know how many feet down with a bulldozer. So they must have some kind of a sort of storm system or whatever. They, they may have a detention system on site that holds water, it may be. Well, maybe we ought to, you know, <laughs> they're the cause of it. We get the water and they're fine. Uh, I don't understand your question. Sorry? I don't understand how they're the cause of it. Well, they're the and, they're, cause and they don't have a problem. With the, with, all they do is uh, put concrete and uh, a catam all over the place, and that's where, why the water can't stay there. So it has to come somewhere. Thank you, Mrs. Uh, Would anyone else like to be heard this evening? If not, I'd attend a motion to go into close. Second. Whereas Section 8 of the Open Public Meeting Act, Chapter 231, Public Law 1975, permits the exclusion of the public from meeting in certain circumstances. And whereas the public body is of the opinion that such circumstances exist. And whereas the Board of Commissioners in the Township of Nutley in the County of Essex and State of New Jersey desires to proceed to close executive session. And now therefore be resolved by the Board of Commissioners of the Township of Nutley move into executive session 
to discuss litigation and negotiations be it further resolved that the time when such discussions may be disclosed to the public shall be when and such disclosure may be made without adversely affecting the township of nutley pending and or anticipated legal personnel contractual matters and other matters within the exceptions provided for by statute this resol resolution shall take effect immediately commissioner kelly aye commissioner evans aye commissioner petraco commissioner scarpelli aye mayor tucci aye Mayor, would you like to close the meeting since we're- Yes, please. Okay. We need a motion to- close. Motion. Commissioner Kelly. Aye. Commissioner Evans. Aye. Commissioner Petraco. Aye. Commissioner Scarpelli. Aye. Mayor Tucci. Aye. And the time is now, I'm sorry, the time is now 814. Thank you.